Hi, I'm Mark. This is my astrology review for uh, Aries Sun Sign, Aries Rising for the year 2020 and it's going to be an exciting year. Um, we have, to start the year, we have Jupiter changing sign and changing house. Now, for you Aries, um, Jupiter is going into Pisces, so this is your 12th house. This is a time uh, that you need to reflect, a time that you need to just um, calm down a bit and think about things. Because in five months time, uh, Jupiter is going to enter your sign um, and your first house and then it's going to go bang. Things are going to happen so quickly, it's going to be great growth and expansion in your life. So for now, for the first five months, you need to just take stock of things. The 12th house is about getting in touch with um, your inner self. It's also a good time to uh, develop the spiritual side and look at the spiritual dimensions of things. Now maybe um, they need to do some behind the scenes work. The 12th house is about, is about hidden things. So you could be working on something, a project that will come to fruition when um, Jupiter goes into your first house and, and your sign of Aries. Now, another aspect with this is you'll be more compassionate, so you may be more um, willing to help others and also to receive help from others as well. So this can benefit you greatly. But then on the 11th of May, uh, when Jupiter moves into your sign, and it's not forever, it's uh, only for a little while because Jupiter will go retrograde and go back into Pisces for a while. But um, you'll get a taster of what it's going to be like because next year Jupiter will be uh, fully in your sign for a good five months again. So, um, make use of this taster, see what starts to happen, uh, there'll be new things, uh, your life will start to grow and expand and you'll be willing to uh, take on more things. You'll be willing to, to look at things that you probably wouldn't have dared done in the, in the past because Jupiter will give you more confidence, the confidence to try things and to grow. Um, the only thing to be wary of is don't overdo it because Jupiter Jupiter can inflate everything and you may get overconfident or you may um, think you can do more than you can so it's best to uh, just keep a check on things. On the 14th of uh, January Mercury uh, makes the first of its three retrogrades this year um, and it will be going back through your 11th house into the 10th briefly. Um, and Capricorn. Now what will happen is that things, communication will become quite difficult especially amongst friends and within group situations. Um, things may get misinterpreted, uh, misunderstood so just be very clear um, in what you say um, and make sure that everybody, uh, if it's in within a group situation, everybody is singing from the same sheet and there's no uh, misconceptions. Now on the uh, following day uh, Uranus, who's been retrograde for some time, stations direct and will slowly move forward now until uh, the end of August. Now, this will bring more urgency as, as Uranus gathers momentum again and moves out of the shadow period. Um, there will be a slow awakening. There will be an urgency comes in to make changes. There may have been that you feel like you've been going over old ground recently with Uranus retrograde and now going forward it's time to really get to grips and make the chain necessary changes um, in your life. On the 19th of January the moon's nodes change sign and house. Now the uh, north node moves into Taurus and this would be your second house so there's a great concern now with resources have it been the second house also about your security as well and your values, what do you value? And in uh, Taurus it's about nature, it's about caring for the planet um, and the area where the North Node is an area of great growth so it's a good time over the next uh, year, year and a half to uh, achieve some growth in that area. Now the South Node in uh, Scorpio uh, is in the 8th house so this will bring into focus shared resources and also uh, it'll make you more acutely aware of, of others and, and within group activities as well. It'll make you more, uh, your perception will increase um, when dealing with other people. On the 4th of February, uh, it's a rare occasion we have all the planets going direct. And this will last for uh, three months or until the 29th of, of April. So make good use of this harness the energies and uh, it's a good time to achieve unhindered. Then on the 1st of March we have a triple conjunction. 
this triple conjunction is between uh, Venus, Mars and Pluto. Now this is very intense energy. Um, we have intense desire with uh, Venus and Pluto and we have intense ambition with uh, Mars and Pluto. Um, and this can be put to good use for this creativity as well between uh, Venus and Mars. So if you can bring in creative change now uh, with passion and desire, this would be fantastic. This is all happening in your 10th house, the area of career, the area of your destiny and also your public standing. So you can make great inroads now. You just need to be careful to channel the energy in the right direction because if this um, energy is left untapped, uh, and left to run wild, it can cause havoc. On the 5th of April, uh, we have uh, quite a difficult conjunction to deal with because Mars catches up to Saturn and conjuncts him. Um, now Mars energy is held back by Saturn. It's, it's going to be difficult um, and it's not a time to push forward with new ideas and new things. And this could affect your future because this is in your 11th house. And the 11th house is about our future and our future planning. So it's probably a time to step back a bit and just to use your uh, tried and tested methods to follow the beaten track rather than forging ahead onto a new path at this moment in time. Stick to the familiar, there will be limitations and restrictions. Work through this um, until Mars breaks free, then you can start planning for the future, then you can start organising um, and putting energy into where you want to be. Also with the 11th house is to do with friends as well, friends and colleagues, group activities. So there could be difficulties here as well. You might find that there are obstacles that come in the way. Um, but don't treat them as a brick wall, um, treat them as something that you can um, circumnavigate. You can go around, underneath or over, um, find a way uh, to keep the, the energy running smoothly. On the 12th of April, exciting uh, conjunction between Jupiter and Neptune. This is the biggest event of the year. Um, this is a coming together of the two, two of the great gods. Um, and they are both rulers of Pisces, and it's happening in Pisces. Um, these two last came together in Pisces in 1856, and this saw the birth of uh, Sigmund Freud. Uh, he transformed the world with his views on uh, psychoanalytics. Uh, um, and again, as something like this will um, come along that will, that will engage us, uh, for the future. Now this is happening in your 12th house, so this is the house of Pisces. So this is this is a great time, this is a good time to explore your unconscious, and explore the world of psychology or astrology, or something that will um, enlighten you and enlighten your mind. This is great for creators, this is great for industries that use creative people and creative energies. Um, because this is a coming together of Jupiter, the god of expansion uh, and knowledge and learning, with the, uh, Neptune, the god of imagination. So this, you can imagine the great um, ideas and, and new art forms that are going to come out of this. This is great for film, for music, anything ruled by uh, Neptune. It's a great, exciting year for the arts. As well as the upsurge in creative energy with this conjunction between Jupiter and Neptune, there'll also be an upsurge of spiritual energy, of compassion for each other. And this will help us to get over the effects of the uh, pandemic and to uh, mourn the losses that came with this. Um, and we'll be more compassionate with each other. Towards the end of April, Venus joins these two. Um, and so this will help with this compassionate uh, spiritual love that, that will come through. And Venus will also increase the artistic um, creative side as well. It'll be good for relationships um, in, in, in all sense. And then we also have um, these two come together with 23 degrees. Now two and three coming together make five. And five is about change. It's about bringing more variety um, into our lives. And this is a good time to, um, to do this, but with, with diplomacy and with um, compassion for each other. As Jupiter moves away from uh, Neptune uh, on the 29th of April, uh, he makes a positive sextile aspect with Pluto. And this again for you is a fantastic um, opportunity 
because Pluto in that 10th house of career and destiny, there'll be some chances now to, to improve your surroundings, improve your, your uh, position and maybe get some advancement. Maybe you'll get more control and more power within your uh, work or your destined path. Um, this is a fantastic opportunity for growth. Um, so use any power that you do have very wisely. On the 30th of April, we have a partial solar eclipse. Now, this eclipse happens in Taurus, um, and this is your second house. We've already said with the nose moving into your second house that there's a strong influence now uh, regarding Taurus. Uh, this eclipse is part of the Saros 6 uh, North series and is renowned for um, bringing change. This could be change in responsibility and, and duties. Um, and if you are presented with opportunities, um, you need to uh, accept them. And these will undoubtedly involve finances. Now also, uh, this eclipse was known for bringing um, and highlighting relationships with authority figures. So this, should be, this could be part of the equation as well. And it could be that the finances are uh, you have to take control of or, or, or are given the opportunity to work with. Uh, may not be your own, maybe belong to other people with the 8th house being um, active at the same time. Um, now this eclipse is also conjunct um, Uranus in Taurus, so there's, a, there's an unpredictability about it as well. Uh, there could be sudden changes that crop up, um, but also it could be a time for inventive thinking, quick thinking. Um, it could be a time when you can gain benefit for yourself through through your, your quick thinking and your and your fast reactions to, to situations. And you may be able to take control, take uh, a step up because of someone else's either illness or, or inability to proceed with the, uh, uh, the commitment. On the 10th of May, Mercury does its uh, second bout of retrograde through uh, uh, Gemini and Taurus. And on 16th of May we have our second eclipse. This one is a total lunar eclipse and it's in Scorpio. Again, it's a fixed sign. So if you have any planets in fixed signs for these eclipses, then you will uh, certainly be more acutely affected. Uh, but this eclipse belongs to the same series as the one in April. Um, so the same theme is, is present. But this time with Scorpio, there's going to be more um, in depth. Uh, this is a time when you can dig below the surface and look into things more carefully. Um, it's also a good time to use your uh, perception because your perception will be increased greatly under this, uh, this eclipse. Then uh, we also have the added effect of, of, of with that Mercury retrograde. So communication will be quite difficult. Although you may be able to find things out, it may not be a good time to bring them up. Save the information, keep it at the back of your mind uh, for when the time is right, because Mercury goes direct again on the 3rd of June. It'd be a, a more uh, beneficial time to uh, communicate your findings. On the 31st of July, we have another very important event. Um, that will uh, uh, enforce the fact that uh, the second house plays the most important part in your life uh, during this year. Um, we have Uranus is in the second uh, coming together in a conjunction with the Moon's uh, North Node. Now this is very important because this can shape your future. This can bring about events that will change uh, the way you see things, uh, you'll have new ideas, um, new thoughts coming through your head that will, will certainly shape uh, a better future for you. And this is all featuring around finances, um, so there could be um, tremendous change going on here. It's also about your values, your values, you'll have to overhaul them because there'll be things coming through now um, that will make you question what you really do value and you may have to make some drastic changes going forward. Um, this is very exciting, um, Uranus um, going direct will be uh, full of new ideas, full of uh, ingenuity, um, unique and genuine. This is a time to really be yourself and to not follow the crowd but to uh, manifest your own uh, dreams and, and go the way you want to go. On the 9th of September, we have our third uh, Mercury retrograde period, 
um, and this lasts to the 2nd of October. And this is going back through Libra and Virgo. This is concerning your seventh house. This is the house of relationships. So it might be a difficult time uh, communicating within relationships. Um, and it may not be a time to bring things up and discuss things. Maybe wait until October when uh, Mercury's direct again and it will fall back into your sixth house as well. So this can also affect your daily routines and uh, daily work. On the 25th of October, we have another eclipse. This time it's a partial solar eclipse in Scorpio. This series of eclipses is the sixth south, and this is a very different feel to it. This one brings intense uh, power and control. Uh, and this can come up within relationships. This could be a good thing. If you can take control, take power uh, from within a relationship and that's mutually acceptable, then this can be fantastic. Um, but it can be difficult if the other person isn't willing to uh, uh, to give you that power. And this is all relationships, not just uh, personal ones. It could be business partnerships. It could be any kind. It could be group relationships, um, and this could concern group activities as well. Now, the intensity of Scorpio, because this is at two degrees, um, is very very strong. Um, again, this is your eighth house, so it could be uh, involving uh, resources. Um, connected to other people outside your normal remit um, but again it will also increase uh, your perception so the second and eighth houses are very much um, a theme for this year for you to work with. The final major event of uh, 2022 is quite a big one it's a, a total lunar eclipse and it happens on the 8th of November um, but there are added complications with this one. The moon is applying to Uranus. Um, so this is going to make it a very unusual, uh, very electric, electrifying um, eclipse. And uh, with Uranus there, anything could happen. Sudden changes, sudden events could fly up. Um, and then with the moon opposing the sun, the sun uh, is applying to uh, Mercury. So that brings Mercury into the equation as well. So communication is going to be vital for this eclipse. But also, and this is the interesting fact, both ends of the uh, opposition between the sun and the moon are square to uh, Saturn. Now Saturn's in that 11th house for you. So this brings in uh, the 2nd, the 8th and 11th all together. So um, the fact that uh, Saturn is there brings responsibility, brings limitation into this equation. So this is going to be a very, very uh, interesting one. You need to focus on the empty um, part of the square and that will be your fifth house, which is the creative side of things. Um, this is where you will gain um, the most insight and will gain some balance because the T-square that is formed by Saturn is a very challenging um, and demanding aspect. So if you can focus energy on the empty um, quadrant, which will be the fifth house, then that will be fantastic because that will help to balance things up and you'll make the most from this, uh, this energised uh, uh, T-square. Now also, um, we have the nodes. The nodes are um, conjuncting um, this as well because we have the north node um, conjunct Uranus, as you recalled a minute ago, and we also have the south node conjunct the sun. And Venus is in there as well on that side. So there's a lot of planets involved with this eclipse. Now the eclipse is of the same series as the one in uh, October, so the same theme runs out. And it's across the same houses, but you've just got this added influence from Saturn. Now, Saturn is the teacher, so this is a good time to take a mentor or a teacher and take on board what they say because they will help you through this um, eclipse. Whatever they say, whatever advice you get, you need to heed it because it can be invaluable uh, going forward. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, if you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And if you'd like to leave a message, I'd love to hear from you.